He's a professor of biological sciences at the University of South Carolina. He also serves as the associate vice president for research and the dean of the graduate school at the University of South Carolina. He was trained as an evolutionary ecologist at McGill University in Canada. Okay, now you've been working in Chernobyl for 12 years. Tim, what have you been doing? The first study we did, uh, we just went around the Chernobyl area and other parts of Ukraine and, and found populations of these birds and, and looked at them, counted them and looked at them and put bands on them and found that in contaminated areas uh, there were a much greater frequency of visible mutations. Uh, patches of white feathers, in fact, uh, very easy to, to see and identify. Uh, in, in recent years, we've since found similar sorts of visible mutations in many other species of birds as well. Uh, so this is a sort of a rather common uh, uh, phenomenon. White feathers, little patches of white feathers. These little patches of white feathers. Yeah, it turns out that um, it seems that the cells responsible for producing pigment in feathers, melanocytes, are rather sensitive to, um, if there are low antioxidant levels in the blood of these, these birds, then the melanocytes in parts of the body tend to, uh, to die, and you end up with uh, patches of white feathers. It turns out that there's a genetic basis or a genetic component to where uh, these cells are most sensitive uh, to, to the background radiation, and it is passed on uh, from one generation oh. to the And what about, I think you've seen abnormal beaks, um, deformities in their beaks? Yeah, so, so you know, we, every year we go back and, and, and track these populations, and, and we keep tabs on the numbers of, of, of other kinds of abnormalities, as you mentioned, uh, uh, deformed feet, uh, tumors around in their abdomen, tumors around their eyes, tumors on their chin, uh, again, deformed skin, uh, missing uh, digits on their, on their feet, uh, just a wide variety of different kinds of, of developmental abnormalities. Um, and, and most of these are not, have not been seen in any other population in the world. And, and because these are barn swallows we're talking about, uh, you know, they're very well studied mm. uh, by quite a number of people. So there have been a lot of, there's been a lot of work done with them. And, and so we know for a fact that these kinds of, of abnormalities just don't occur with any frequency in other populations where there is this, where there is no radioactive contaminants. Um, so, yeah, we've been keeping track of that uh, about, I guess, uh, four or five years ago, we expanded the range of species that we were looking at to include all of the birds living in, in, in the forested areas, uh, mostly passerines, uh, songbirds. And, and again, we, we do documented uh, many different examples of these kinds of abnormalities in these birds that just don't occur anywhere else. And the frequency at which these abnormalities are, are observed uh, is directly proportional to you know the level of background contamination.